You know, there's really no hiding place for Tinubu at, this, at the tribunal anymore. No hiding place. His case is so difficult to defend that many of his witnesses are running away. It was only Senator Kweyame that summoned courage to come to the court to put up what looked like a defense, but was actually proving Tinubu's case, uh, sorry, Peter Obi's case for him. He summoned courage, perhaps because they just rewarded him with a post as majority leader of the Senate. And so he had to give something back to show gratitude. Perhaps that's why he came to defend Tinubu. But all other people that you would have expected to come and defend Tinubu, they all ran away. You would have expected that the likes of Femi Fanikayode, the likes of um, Festus Kayamu would have come to court with the way they were vituperating on channels TV the other time, defending and saying all manner of things, lying on national TV. You would have expected that somebody like Festus Kayamu would come now and repeat those statements under oath. But he was nowhere to be found. He cleverly, cleverly dodged and recused himself because he knows that if he dared to say even 10% of those things he said on national TV on channels, if he dared to say them under oath, he will go to jail for perjury. He knows. And that's why he cleverly absconded. And there were no other serious people, serious persons that Tinubu could bring because of how difficult his case is at the court. Very difficult. I mean, how do you handle this U.S. drug case for Tinubu? How do you clear his name for something that is so public, something that is there for all to see? How do you even, how do you start defending him? Look, for people who think that the case is actually a simple case, a small case, that it was just a civil for future, it was not that at all. This case, the investigation took place for almost two years, from 1991. That was when they started the investigation. And the special agent in charge was Special Agent Kevin Moss. Two years of investigation, and the prosecution took about four months. The prosecution took about four months. The process was so detailed that the special agent went to court and swore to an affidavit detailing all the, his findings in the investi investigation. He detailed any, everything in his sworn affidavit on July 6, 1993. And then on July 28, 1993, he went to file a verified complaint for forfeiture against Tinubu, that's like an indictment. He went to, to put a formal indictment to bring formal charges against Tinubu in his verified complaint for forfeiture. That's an indictment. Now, after the indictment of July 28, 1993, the court now gave an ex parte order to freeze the account of Tinubu, Bola Tinubu, on August 19, 1993. The court gave the order based on the sworn affidavit and the verified complaint of forfeiture of Special Agent Kevin Moss. Now, after freezing the account of Tinubu on August 19, 1993, an advert was placed to notify the public on July 2, 1993, asking for Tinobu and his people to come and defend themselves. And that advert stayed for two weeks. That they had two weeks to come and defend themselves. To come and prove their innocence. For those of you saying that Tinobu was innocent, he was just a civil for picture. No. Now, after that advert was made for two weeks, Tinobu and his people did not come to defend themselves. Mind you, at that time, Tinobu was in Nigeria. And those were the days of Abacha. And so, there was no way that Tinobu could have been extradited back to the U.S. to come and face his case, his charges. So what he did was to ask his people to approach the court and do a plea bargain. So on September 15, 1993, his people showed up in court to ask for a plea bargain. So the defendant represented by Kola, Tinobu, and the plaintiff in this case, the United States of America, represented by Special Agent Kevin Moss, drew the terms and conditions of the plea bargain on September 15. And then this was tendered in court and the court docketed it 
on September 21, 1993. And then on October 5, 1993, the judge gave a ruling. And that ruling was an order of court that, number one, convicted Tinubu of the crime of being in possession of proceeds of narcotics trafficking in violation of 18 U.S. Code 1956 and 18 U.S. Code 1957. And then, also now sentenced him to a fine of 460,000 U.S. dollars based on the prescribed punishment for violating the code 1956 and 1957. So this process took about four months. This process took four months to conclude after an investigation that took over two years. So it was not a play thing at all. It was not a play, play something at all. It was a serious something. And at the end of the day, there was a conviction. You see, with Tinubu, it is difficult to defend him because there are so many things to defend. You're defending age, you're defending certificate, you're defending state of origin. So many baggages, so many things to defend. And this particular U.S. drugs case is so hard to defend that even Festus Kayamu has come to his senses and decided to run away. Because he knows that there's no way you can defend this U.S. drugs case for Tinubu. He knows. You know, they managed to go and bring this letter that they said Tafa Balogun wrote. This cunningly crafted letter that was meant to deceive. That there is no search warrant. Who is asking about search warrant for Tinubu? They were simply trying to be clever by half. By saying the FBI database was searched by the... U.S. Embassy in Nigeria. That was just a very, very watery excuse, a watery gimmick. Very watery gimmick. And when that did not work, they now decided to go the route of, oh, they are going to present Tinubu's passport that he has been traveling to U.S. and coming back since 2011. Look, the truth remains that because that case had been vacated, the case had been resolved, the case has been dispensed of, by way of plea bargain and the punishment for Tinubu's offense in that case had been meted out to him and his funds have been forfeited. That case had been closed. So with respect to that case, there is no reason for Tinubu to be arrested after 1993, October 5, that the case was dispensed of. No reason. So bringing his passport to the court to come and prove that he's been going to America and coming back does not remove the fact that he was convicted of being in possession of monies that are proceeds of narcotics trafficking, unlawfully acquired. It does not remove it. And that case has been dispensed of. And by the way, let's even go back to this whole case of the United States Embassy in Lagos writing to Tafa Balogun then that there was no arrest warrant for Tinubu. If only the police, if the police really needed to know the truth of the matter, all they needed to do was go to the court because these documents you can obtain certified true copies of them, which is what we have gotten now and is being used against him and improves everything. Now, if you tie this to our own laws here, you see that really it is clear very very clear that this case is almost impossible for Tinubu's lawyer to defend almost impossible and that is why when they admitted this evidence they admitted this document this certified true copy of the u.s drug case into evidence it was trouble for the Tinubu camp big big trouble that is why you now see that their defense was weak because all they planned before now fell down like a pack of cards and the likes of Festus Keyamu, that was doing a lot of gragra then, could not be seen to come and witness for Tinubu. First, uh, Femi Fanikayode could not be seen to come and witness for Tinubu. They could not because there is no way Festus Keyamu would come and say those things he said on channels, on, under oath at the tribunal, and not be charged for perjury. That is how difficult the case is for Tinubu's team right now. The case is crystallizing very very quickly the job of the judges is being made easier by tinubu's weak defense and apc's weak defense and inex almost zero defense because really how do you defend criminality how as much as this is good news 
the responsibility still falls on you and I. All eyes on the judiciary. With all of this overwhelming evidence and taking into account the fact that you still have the forms EC8A, which is the primary evidence of the election in custody. Uh -uh. <laughs> By the time the correct things are done, we'll begin to see very, very clearly. You know, at, at the beginning, I was concerned that the APC were going to waste time doing their defense. But sincerely speaking, I am happily surprised that they were not even able to put up any defense. They have cut short the time wasting, so we will now have time to do all the tabulation. This mandate is reclaimable and we are on the path to reclaiming it. All we need is that you and I will, must continue to talk. We must continue to say it as it is. We must continue to put the correct information in the public space so that they don't use their propaganda to distract us. Now they are talking about, oh, foreign direct investment. Oh, Tinubu is working. Whether Tinubu is working or Tinubu is not working, we know it's not working. But whether or not he is working does not matter. What we need is the mandate of the people retrieved and recovered. And by the way, he's not even working because his policies are headed in the wrong direction. Perhaps he's thinking that if the courts will not favor him, like it is looking like the courts will not favor him, he can try to pally the West by dancing to their tunes, giving them the policies that they want. And then in return, those people can use their Magomago -mago means to defend him. But we say lie. That will not work because everything, we are shining light on everything now. And everything is in the public domain. So, no Western powers can help you, Tinubu. They cannot. It is better you do the right thing so that for the short time you will be there, by the grace of God, that short time you will at least do something that Nigerians will remember you for good for. Instead of all these draconian policies that you are enacting to punish the Nigerian people, hoping that the Western powers will help you. They cannot help you in this matter. The evidence is overwhelmingly against you and then the job for the judges has been made easier. There's nothing you can do. They will rule. And when they rule, the mandate of the people will be retrieved. 